Hi guys and welcome back to your channel. Here's a little bit of a new Take Tuesday coming up and um, this time it's not about cars, it's not about Land Rovers or anything else. No, this is about a jet ski that I recently bought because I have two jet skis I lost uh, in a hurricane recently and um, so far uh, it looks pretty well. So I bought this jet ski and uh, I was actually spending a lot of time mounting a cooler in the back for fishing like I normally do and everything is set with the lanterns and light and working light and what have we some uh, GPS and a sonar system and so forth so it takes a little bit of time so the excitement to go out and try it out was actually pretty high now what happened was I put the thing in the water and uh, we wanted to go uh, and race off and it was kind of good so everything is fine initially but the symptom came up after 700 yards of sailing the engine overheated and um, it is a Yamaha VX uh, Deluxe and uh, this is a 2012 model as you can see I've taken everything apart right now down here and it um, looks like this basically so you probably recognize the engine however um, I could cool it off and I could actually hold home it went into limping mode and I could hold back into the uh, hopper which was fine and uh, I did a few things and some adjustments and I figured well there must be something else wrong maybe it ingested some seaweed or something like that but that was not the case, so um, I tried almost three hours to get it working out there so we can go fishing. However, I had to give up on it in the end and uh, coming home. Now, I could flush the, uh, the jet ski and the flushing was no problem. It was just standing there with no problem, water running through, coming out through everywhere, not overheating or anything like this. So uh, that was kind of weird. It was only when it came uh, and you wanted to give it full power. As soon as you get to full power, then you got the heating or the temperature overheat light and also the bell coming on uh, first beep tone like beep 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 and then it will go beep constantly and then it will go into limp mode uh, something told me that it wasn't getting enough cooling of course and um, since I had a lot of water coming out everywhere and I could put it up on land and actually flush it and not actually be able to um, to try to, to get this failure to come up um, I figured there must be something wrong with uh, probably cooling system so I went in and started to investigate what could be wrong and here is the uh, final result I went in and checked uh, down here you have the inlet actually here this is where you flush the jet ski so it runs in this way and down in that area there's a uh, couple down there that actually runs together and that's where the inlet hose is for the water coolant then it runs on this side over here the drive shaft comes on the other side goes into the oil cooler down there comes out over here and then it goes down towards the exhaust manifold over there as well this part is the exhaust water coming out from the, from the engine and somewhere in between since I had enough uh, water coming out on the side over in the port side over there uh, and I thought that was quite okay I would imagine that it would be inside the uh, engine somewhere so I took the exhaust manifold off which you can see here now it sits with uh, I think it's 10 screws you have uh, four in that one over here you got uh, six you got four you got 11 screws or 11 bolts in this one some that you can take off and actually um, as you can see these cooling areas here this is where the water runs through was filled up with some goo however I put some pressure into this nozzle here with my uh, air hose and by putting air hose in there like this and put a cloth in it and give a little bit of a blow then you can feel where the air is coming out on the other side here on the side of the head so you don't have to take the head off and uh, I had the number three here was actually or number two whichever we counted from was actually not giving me the amount of air that I needed so I went in and uh, I've tried to find out to figure out some uh, ways to clean out the area and I started out with a small little bit of a sharp a uh, little bit of a pencil here that could go in and next came out with some goo and I was like wow this is like kind of interesting then I went with a small screw and a very very tiny one make sure it doesn't break on you as you can see it's been in quite a lot of goo here uh, and it's just coming out slowly and as I got through with that I went ahead and got a, another little thing here as you can see and that could actually screw in and then I could pull it out just like a grinder nice and easy after I did all this 
I could put another pressure in and I got all the goo out. Now all these holes down here are actually delivering exactly the same amount of air. That means the water has now free passage. So on my number two cylinder that didn't have enough water coming through and therefore after flying around the water for maybe 700 yards that would be enough to go ahead and get everything sorted. And that's why the uh, alarm went off. So now it's gotten um, fixed. Let's go ahead and assemble it and see how it works. And there it is. This is how it looks like, and that's where the cooling holes, they're actually coming out. That was the clogged up one. So as you can see, now it's just a matter of putting all this through back together again, and um, put the gaskets back in, tighten it up to specifications, and uh, now it's time after that to go out and test one more time. And if it's gone, that's the problem. Uh, apparently, it was this cylinder right here, that didn't have enough cooling and water flow coming through it. So if I'm not uh, mistaken a lot, then it should be uh, solved the problem by now. Anyway, let's go ahead and assemble the rest. As you can see, it's really warm. I just finished the uh, finishing right here. So the manifold's back on, the cooling area's back on, the exhaust is back on, everything is actually working. So before we close up and everything's uh, basically done, you always do an inventory check that you didn't forget anything like winches and uh, sockets and stuff like that. And then out here, have a look if you have any screws or bolts or anything laying that you're not supposed to have there then if not you are actually done so uh, i'm now ready to try to go out and put this thing in the water and uh, hopefully it's gonna work i really hope it does we'll see uh, and if it does now you guys out there with jet skis yamas vxd doxes uh, with the one 1100 rp or the 1100 cubic uh, engine in it um with 110 horsepower i believe it is or whatever but if you have that one and it looks like this that could be one of your problems if you cannot sail for very long or you're in salty waters and it turns out that you get the uh, engine heating overlight or temperature light on after maybe a mile or a little bit more than a mile then it's one of these uh, cooling ribs inside your uh, head basically needs to be uh, unclogged so uh, you could say it had a blood cloth that's what it was in this case so let's get started on the water <laughs> 